Hey, what is up mortals? It's Wesley here and welcome to part 6 of Evil Naruto Rebooted. Just wanted to greet you guys by saying sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. And so, we begin. One month later, Kumogakure, a land of high cliffs surrounded by water. Menma gazed over it, scanning the entirety. The clouds that normally hover across the midsection of those cliffs were blood red. There was plenty of hate to go around in this village. The wind flailed his cloak around while the calm before the storm was still commencing. Shisui appeared behind Menma in a bowed position. The Oni masked leader wasn't phased by any means, and was even expecting him. You finished your perimeters and spotted the target? Shisui nodded his head, not speaking a single word. Menma simply nodded in return. Good. It's about time we began the operation. Gray and musky clouds dwelled above as the tyrant spoke those words. The storm was beginning to settle in. There is a complication that we failed to foresee beforehand, my lord. There is another Jinchuriki among their ranks. It was difficult to get a reading of his chakra level, but I believe he will be an obstacle. He had equipped with him many different kinds of blades, but that's about all I could make of him during my scouting. Mema sighed before he turned his head back towards Shisui. Well done. Share the info with the others, who won't be leaving empty-handed regardless. Menma's appearance and background surrounding him phased into a memory of when he was younger. Young Naruto's posture matched that of his future self. However, next to him were the rest of Orochimaru's experiments. His body ached from the severe training he was put through, and a few gashes from when Orochimaru was running surgical operations on him. Back then, the Sage of Snakes would continuously cut down Naruto limb from limb, as his Jinjuriki regeneration would grow them back later. Orochimaru figured Naruto will lead him down a faster path to immortality. The Leaf Ninja's regeneration capabilities were immaculate. Orochimaru stood before his experiments in training, going over the daily schedule with Kabuto in what each of their tasks will be for the day. Alright, the new one will be sparring with Jugo. This will be your first test to gain some combat incentive, so you can be ready for a real mission. As for you, Jugo, I'd like you to work on the upper limits of your cursed sage when you're facing this young Genin. You'll need them. Jugo felt offended by this remark. This blonde outpacing him was as likely as going back home. Whatever, I guess. Come on, brat. The both of them walked out of the room into the training grounds. Orochimaru continued with the daily schedule with Sugetsui and Karen. Both of you will be coming with me. Outside, Naruto and Jugo stood across from each other. The air around the redhead was eerie, as if there was a specific bloodlust around him that went even deeper than his negative emotion. The blonde didn't want to take part in this, but he was too afraid to go against Orochimaru's direct orders. Before the Genin could even find proper footing, Jugo was already a face distance away from Naruto. A grey outer shell swallowed resolute muscle like armor. The scaly grey carapace wrapped the elbow supported by grey tubes made of the same material. Flames spurred out from every single pipe as his fist landed directly towards Naruto's skull, sending the boy flying across the field. Craters occurred every time the Genin bounced off the floor. Naruto had to recollect himself for a few moments just to recover from Jugo's piston fist. Though the vessel for the origin of the curse mark didn't stop there. Using his jet booster jump technique, he leaped into the air, and his other arm extended out into what looked like a chain. It wrapped around Naruto before he could collect his bearings. Jugo used his monstrous strength to flip, with the chain following with him, sending Naruto into the air before he slammed him back into the floor. However, Naruto puffed into a cloud of smoke upon impact. The real one was already behind Jugo, using his chakra nature of wind to twirl the redhead off his game in mid-air before grabbing his scalp and fell with him to the floor. Upon impact, erupted a gust of dirt clouds from the crater that was now left behind. However, Jugo was the one on top in the end. Heh, <laughs> seems you're as strong. Cunning even, but that won't be enough to take me down. This battle is straight up unfair. Jugo's eyes were backed by a bloodlust emitting from the curse converting him into the monster he truly is. All senses that made up his being were filled with a desire to kill the Ginnon before him, though his face lit up when he realized Naruto began to push the hunk of muscle off of him. An aura shifted around Naruto, but not that of a Jinjuriki, but that of an inner gate being opened. The blonde successfully broke out of the pin he found himself in, and followed it up with a kick to Jugo's face, sending him headfirst into the very crater they both made. Naruto stood up to face him, 
He spat out some blood before wiping it away on his sleeve. You're right, this battle is unfair. Naruto body flickered, grabbing one of Jugo's legs to pull him out of the crater. His face was pulled out of the dirt, but the blonde's quick hand grabbed his head and slammed him back into the ground. A few clones summoned and followed up by raining down great vacuum cannons, invisible blades of wind with the force of a tsunami. Each directly hit Jugo, impaling him to the floor. The original Naruto opened his second gate and began to kick against his opponent's back, stabbing them deeper through Jugo's body, though while he was severely damaged, this only increased his lust for the kill, and his curse spread out more rapidly as each of the wind blades snapped and was forced out of him. He grabbed Naruto by the ankle, and his piston fist reactivated as he stood up, spinning in circles, flailing the Genin around like a rag doll before tossing him into the air. He then followed up by placing both his arms together, and massive cannons appeared out from each fist. A bright force of nature energy gathered up in the cannons and blasted outwards in Naruto's direction. All that was left was a ray of missing land left behind. This subsided Jugo's anger, and his curse slowly unraveled along his skin. He was exhausted by the attack, though from underneath the ground, a clone of Naruto uppercutted Jugo with a second eighth gate open, sending the cursed progenitor flying and he landed on his back. Meanwhile, the real Naruto found himself at the other end of the cannon attack. A pile of dirt gathered behind him, and the whole front side of his body's skin was burned off. Shortly after, it regenerated. Naruto began walking to Jugo's location, and when he got there, he was already lying unconscious. Very unfair. Naruto stared down at his defeated opponent, though he noted how worthy he was for the Genin to open his second gate. There is no losing in the real world. Naruto simply walked away, leaving Jugo behind. Karen made her way outside. She waved at Naruto. How did it go? Naruto simply walked past her. Fix him up. Karen exhaled briefly as they crossed paths. His mood always seems to sour after these, doesn't it? But I guess he's always been quiet since we met. Back inside the lair, it was Suigetsu's day with Orichimaru. Typically on days like these, Orichimaru pushes their limits to what they can handle. Checking their chakra paths and surpassing the current capacity of their jutsus through experimentation and testing. Naruto looked into the cell where Kabuto and Orochimaru were running tests for Suigetsu. But as these days ran by, Naruto grew to cope with these incidences. Plus, it's not like there's anything for him to look forward to or go back on. The entire village abandoned him. He walked into the kitchen and made some ramen, one for himself and one for Juko, even if he was an asshole. They're still partners who have to watch out for each other, something he learned from Kakashi. He left Jugo's bowl in front of his cell. Thanks for training with me. Now eat up. Naruto walked away from the cell, and Jugo opened his menacing eye. He slowly crawled over towards the bowl to pick it up, and he began feasting on the noodles. Naruto returned to his cell, cleaning himself up and putting on a fresh new set of clothes provided by Orochimaru. He was dressed up from head to toe in white fabric that trailed down past his waist. It was tied down along his waist with a rope. He stepped out of his cell to head back outside, giving him time away from the negative musk that lingered through the air here. He sat outside the grass, drenching himself in the peace around him. Naruto closed his eyes and ported his sight to the Ninetales domain. Jubi, I have a request. The fox's ear lifted from the sudden noise that rang through his voided chamber. Ah, I see you're back, boy. How are things going in the outer world? Naruto rolled his eyes, letting the QB's remark slide. That doesn't matter. Right now, I need my power. Our mission is going to be underway here soon. Ah, power. Well, I suppose, but I want something in return. The Ganon lifted his eyebrow, intrigued at the sheer fact that he was requesting something back for the first time. That's so. Well... Nothing about me is mine anymore, but depending on what it is, I can see about something being done about it, I suppose. The Nine Tails chuckled with a deep conniving growl backing it. <laughs> oh, please. Even you aren't foolish enough to believe that anyone here has the power to keep us bound here without you saying so. Anyway, as for my request, I'd like to increase our bond. Naruto felt dumbfounded by the fox's request. The audacity of it was almost laughable. And I thought you couldn't be more degrading. Do you believe I'd like anything to do with you after everything you put me through this far? Even back several months ago, you admitted you could break me out of Genjutsu at will. 
Yet you decided to go through what Lord Danzo put me through. And don't even get me started with that shit you pulled by allowing me to see the negative emotion. <laughs> oh, please. If I had my reasons, you wouldn't have progressed nearly as much without me. That ability of yours has saved your life countless times by now. And also, I believe Danzo can finally give you a damn spine. Worthy of being my vessel. Naruto buckled his emotions back before going complete AWOL on the fox. <sighs> Again, I don't see you in a position to make requests, let alone demands. And I don't see myself in a position to accept yours either. If you don't follow my request, then be gone already. Naruto took a deep breath. His pride isn't worth this argument. He submitted to the fox. What would you have me do? The fox turned his gaze towards the boy and smiled slightly. Release me, of course. The blonde swept his hand to the side in outrage, giving an obtuse and aggressive position to the fox. Damn it, Nine Tails, do you take me for a fool? Even I wouldn't be dumb enough to release you and be slaughtered like that. The fox settled down to a lying position, growing bored as he did. Well, that's true. Suppose you aren't strong enough for me yet. I throw for a real battle, and I suppose the way you are now, you wouldn't survive. Oh, whatever. Just take some chakra and leave. Naruto scoffed as he walked away from the cage and back into reality. Something was off. As soon as he opened his eyes, he sensed negative emotion nearby, up in the trees. He gazed up to the center of where the musk emitted from. Something was watching him. An Ambu member? Get down! I already see you. The Ambu body flickered and kneeled before Naruto. I have come with a message from Lord Danzo, a mission briefing. Naruto took the information scroll from the Ambu's hands and opened up its contents. Ready, huh? Sooner than I thought. Naruto, the tuning exams will take place two months from now. I need you to infiltrate the exams. I have a specific target for you that I believe will cause trouble for the village. He goes by Gara. And he'll be arriving from the village of Sands. He's a ginger key, just like you. I want him eliminated. You can't be seen there. Do not feel me like you did when we first met. Danzo. Tch. Danzo and his damn schemes. He tossed the scroll aside. As he did, the Ambu grabbed his wrist, building a kunai to the kid's neck. Do not disrespect the lord in my presence. Naruto rolled his eyes, growing agitated by the ignorance before him. A translucent orange chakra arm erupted from his torso, uppercutting the Anbu away. He moved too quickly for him to dodge. The mysterious Anbu struggled to pick himself up, but was cut short by Naruto's foot stepping on him. Return to your master. I don't want to see you here again. If you show your damn mask to me again, I'll kill you. His eyes were just as monotonous as the ones Naruto used to see daily within the village. He has already lost himself in these past short months. The blonde lifted his foot off of the ninja before he body flickered away from Naruto, disappearing entirely. He took a few short breaths before heading inside. Through the halls, Naruto's footsteps echoed throughout before he reached Orochimaru's quarters. It seems my plans intertwine with yours. Lord Danzo has provided me a target for the Chunin exams. I require clothing that can mask my appearance. He offered the mission scroll to Orochimaru's desk, and the Sanin smiled. Looks like it then. I am expecting no less than excellence from you, Naruto. I'll do my best not to disappoint you. Naruto turned away, tightening his fist a bit. He hated this, this submission everywhere he turned. Acting like a sucker when he wanted nothing more than just be isolated. The damn musky clouds were suffocating in this place for the young boy. A couple of months passed, and Orochimaru's plan to attack Konoha began. Naruto overlooked the entire leaf village atop the head of the four Hokage's memorial on Hokage Rock. It was as cloudy as ever. Nothing changed about this place since his disappearance. Did anyone even try and reclaim him? Meanwhile, in the village walked a man, and the only thing larger than his ego was his physique. The white-haired jolly male picked his feet up along the floor, meandering along the leaf village eating an apple. Seems like the tuning exams are about to start. What a time to get some freebies and the ladies around here, among all the action. His jolly face sunk to a casual stare. Oh, to think. His mind was filled with the memory of what occurred a few days ago in the Hokage's office. 
Uriah stood before Hiruzen. There was a discrepancy between the both of them. What do you mean the boy isn't here anymore? Where'd he go? As of right now, his whereabouts are unbeknownst to me. I haven't seen him since he disappeared several months back. Have you done anything to even try and retrieve him? Damn it, Hiruzen. You had a promise to keep to the fourth, and so do I. I am aware. However, in this world's current climate, setting out search parties without even a hint of the boy left behind would just be a waste of time. We even had a few Inuzaka members on our case with their search dogs, but his scent doesn't even show itself anymore. Jiraiya's grasp on the Hokage's desk tightened, scraping his nails against the wood. He was infuriated beyond comparison from the dreaded news. You can't honestly tell me the boy died, can you? No. If he died, he could still be found within a 30 kilometer radius. I'm just saying he's nowhere to be found to begin with. I sincerely hope we find the boy soon, but at this point, I'm not sure if we'll ever be able to find him unless he comes back to us first. Jiraiya's thoughts shifted back to the present day. At this rate, he couldn't enjoy himself with women even if he wanted to. Knowing that the boy he promised to take care of was gone long before he arrived. Damn that old man. Competent enough to become the Hokage and watch over a village. He can't even be trusted to keep his eye on one child. Naruto, I hope that wherever you are, you're doing alright. Naruto gazed down at the village. He held a mask as he continued to stand there. He was simply waiting for his moment to strike. He wrapped the cover around his face, covering everything but his eyes, and lifted his hood. The mask he carried, he equipped over his face. It was designed with fear in mind. The mask of an Oni. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in the story thus far. Hope you enjoyed it! Now there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, we've got a primary channel called We the Celestials. We the Celestials is what we do here already, but their content is centered around the crazy world and lore of My Hero Academia. So please, check us out over there if you're feeling in the mood for a roller coaster of quirky content. We also have another relative to our channel, Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes deep into the facts and lore of a wide variety of anime. It's sure to expand your weeb knowledge for all kinds of series guaranteed. I'd like to let you all know, on behalf of Weed to Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the protection of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. If you're perhaps interested in what we do here at Weed to Celestials, then I'd like to extend out an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being we only accept members 16 and older to join our crew. You can find us on our Discord, which you can locate in the description below. Our Discord is an all-around fantastic place to be, rather you're a fan or are looking to join our band of misfits. All you gotta do is hit up the recruitment server and sign up for whichever category of work that fulfills your interests. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it for us from today's video, so thank you all for watching and have a great day!